Today we're going to dissect your backswing. We are going to talk about your sequence of what the best players do in the world. We're going to talk about arm positions and where those need to be for your backswing to look like you probably want it to look like. And then we're going to talk about the rotation and how that basically makes the backswing look and perform as it should. Because a lot of times we get a little bit off with one or maybe all three of those. This topic could probably go on for 20 or 30 minutes. We're going to try to keep it around 10 minutes today, so make sure you stay tuned. Don't miss a part because it could kind of mess up your backswing. If you are brand new to our channel, make sure you subscribe. You can see the future videos that we have, especially if you hit that bell button. And if you enjoy the backswing content today, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you watch any of our other videos, give us a thumbs up. It helps us grow this channel. sequence of your golf swing, if you don't know it already, it can make you play really good one day. It can make you play really bad one day. The big difference between a pro golfer and the amateur golfer, a low amateur, is the pro is just better sequenced all the time. All right? Well, the amateur kind of fluctuates back and forth. You could probably tape your swing one day and it would look fantastic. And the next day, it could look the exact same and you could play terrible, but your sequence was different, okay? So the sequence of the pro golfer goes like this. Their first move is their wrist start to set. Second move, as their wrist start to set, arms start to move. Third is torso. And finally, their last move is their hips, all right? So that is the sequence of the takeaway moving into the backswing. A lot of the times we try to keep that one arm takeaway move, hands get really high up here, and just leads to nothing. It leads to a lot of power loss. It's really weird looking seeing somebody's arms go that high. So what you need to look for if you're doing this right is the correct sequence, all right? And your hands should basically stay at the same height until they get past your right foot, all right? And so I'll put a professional golfer on there and you'll see that when he gets to position two or just like the takeaway position, his hands and his club head are going to both fit in a circle, all right? Because he's setting his wrists, and it's not a huge move. Right? If you don't set your wrists, you can see where the club changes, okay? So that is the correct sequence of the takeaway in the golf swing. Now, sometimes we set our wrists, and it might flip backwards, all right? One thing that you can kind of key on is what your right thumb does. So as you take it back, feel like your right thumb points out away from you. Don't let it point behind you, all right? So keep that wrist pointing out in front of you. Because a lot of us, we do this, right? We try to turn and we push it away and we do that. Ugh. So we gotta feel like our forearms stay close together as our wrist set, and that keeps that club in a good plane position in our takeaway. Now, when it comes to what your arms do in your golf swing, they don't do a whole lot, right? A lot of our power comes from rotation and what our wrists do, and if you use the ground effectively. But the arms basically do this. If you hold the club out in front of you, that's your right arm curl, all right? That is the top of your back swing. So you can see that my left arm went across my chest about this much. That's all it does. Okay, arms are pretty simple when it comes to the golf swing, and we tend to make it really hard. We tend to push our arms across our body or lift our arms really away from us. So you can just do that simple drill of setting it there, bending over, and then turning to the top, and your position will be basically where it needs to be. Okay, that's, that's all the arms kind of do. So if you can make it really simple like that, that would be the way to go. Now this little swing guide tool, which I used in my last video, but it's cheap and it's actually a really good tool. All right, this can help you with the sequence of the takeaway. All right, so if you know if you set your wrist too much, you're gonna find it way too early, All right? And then it'll set right there when you're parallel to the ground, it's set in the left arm. Now, if you roll your hands away from you, you're gonna miss it. If you do something weird, I don't know, whatever you might do, all right, you're gonna miss it. So what we're looking for is your left arm not to go flying across your chest because you're gonna miss it. That's not how the body rotates. We're looking for the left arm to go about that far across your chest. So if I push it just across my chest and I bend into my golf posture and I rotate, 
All right, you can see where it is. It's basically pointing just a little bit left of my target. So if I take the club back correctly and I get into that spot, all right, you can see it's just a little bit past my target. It's a little bit to the right of it, which is fine. Okay, so I match it in there, and then you just practice that a little bit. Now I just barely missed it. I tend to get my arms a little bit too deep, which we're going to talk about here in a second. All right, but that's where your left arm should be. Try to get it to go right there. You'll notice when it goes to that point, and my left shoulder moves across my body. Right? It doesn't just go there magically without rotation. Left arm and left shoulder move across my body. Okay. The other thing that you'll notice when you do these things correctly, all right, you'll notice that the club will actually start to be a little bit more vertical, which we want, because then it shallows out what we like. As the club is shallow, it tends to then go steep, okay? So we would like to see that position three with the club pretty vertical, kind of going through your shoulder, get it to the top, and then you're able to shallow it a whole lot easier. People who go here, you have to stay down there, which is, it's a hard move. It requires more forearm rotation and hand flip to, to hit the ball nice and straight, All right? So we know the sequence. We know what the arm should do. Where does rotation play a role in all this? Okay, the only way your hands get deep, the only thing that turns in the golf swing really is your chest and your hips, okay? Arms do not go across your body. So if I go to three right here and I don't turn at all, I'm in trouble. I'll probably come down steep. My hands aren't deep enough. All right, so the rotation of the body is what actually gets the hands to the right place on top. It's not the arms pushing across or anything strange like that or the wrist going that way, which we, a lot, may, most amateurs struggle with that. They try to create too much rotation or they get a lot of rotation with their body and they're really flat, so they have really flat swings and they, they struggle that way. So we want you to feel like you get it here, and then all you're going to do is you're just going to keep on rotating a little bit more to get it to the top. So my arms did that little move, right? And then I just rotate to the top. Hand depth with the irons basically off the inside of the heel. Some people like it a little bit deeper, especially if you struggle with slicing it. Uh, there's a few players that play with it a little bit more out in front, but they do a really good job of shallowing the club. Right, so for most of us out there who don't have arm depth, let's get that position three, keep on rotating. Even if you only rotate to here, but your arm depth is better and your club is set correctly, you'll still be able to strike that ball a whole lot better from that point in your golf swing. All right, so sequence, where the arms go, and finally, you have to rotate. You gotta get your arms deep. All right, this is going, a lot of people who don't rotate get really short here. Then they rotate really fast with their upper body, and we see a lot of slamming down. But this way makes it so much easier, is if you know the sequence, and you know where that left arm needs to go. Okay, right arm doesn't have to stay straight. It can fold, right? It's short of 90 degree angle. Then it gets to the top, and it folds to a full 90 degree angle. So you get the nice looking backswing that you want. And then you train it, start slow, and then go faster. See if I can get it with a fast one right off the bat. Yeah, it was close. I missed it just a hair. Okay, so I hope this video on the backswing, right? There's still other sections that we could talk about, but I don't want to take up 20 minutes of your time. All right, if you have any questions or if you're interested on in taking kind of an online lesson when it comes to all this, uh, you can find all of that on my site.